All right, it's John here, and uh, I'm going to take a little break from the project Euler problems because they're really just turning into math problems and not really uh, the kind of closure language problems that I'm really interested in right now. So uh, there's a good project called Foreclosure, and uh, let's let's start solving some of those problems. So uh, so over here on the on the right, here's the problem. I'm already logged in. This is number one called Nothing But the Truth. And here uh, we're going to just basically put in code that's going to go in that blank that, that solves this uh, expression. So uh, obviously this is just true equals true. Um, we could do anything um, that returns true. So let's just do true. And we got it. So we can move on to problem number two. Simple math. So what we're going to do here is just kind of guess what this uh, evaluates to. So it looks like we'll start in the middle, uh, in the beginning, uh, where we're nested down to the bottom. And it says 2 times 3, which is 6, <coughs> and then 10 minus 6. So this is 4. And run that. Good. So let's move on to strings. OK, uh, it's going to run a Java method on this string. So it's, it's almost literally like typing in hello world dot to uppercase so it'll return hello world in uppercase okay moving right on uh, now list so basically it's just telling us that uh, we can either construct something with the literal form quote or with the list function and uh, so what it says is a b C, when we type it into this into this blank spot here, it's going to be the same as the quoted form. These are the keywords A, B, and C. Good, so that works. Moving on. Okay, list conch. So when operating on a list, the conch function will return a new list with one or more of the items added to the front. Note that there are two test cases, but you are expected to supply only one answer, which will cause all the tests to pass. Okay, so basically we have conch and then a list and then some value. So what it says is we're going to conj one onto this list and since it's a list it's going to go in the beginning so we'll end up with list one two three four and we see in our second test case we have three four and then we're going to conj on the first item of the rest of the arguments and then the next argument of the rest of the arguments so it'll work out the same way that we get list one two three four okay on that all right now we'll go on to vectors okay vectors can be constructed several ways you can compare them with lists okay so we have list keyword abc vector of keywords abc and just vector abc okay and that is going to return us keyword A, keyword B, keyword C inside of this vector here. All right, moving on, vectors conj. Okay, when operating on a vector, the conj function will return a new vector with one or more items added to the end. Okay, so we have the conj function again, some collection, and then the value to be conged onto the collection. And since the data structure is a vector, it's going to go to the end of it. Uh, and so here, now when we run conj with multiple arguments, we can sort of keep them in the order that they're going to end up in because the next arguments will go to the end of the vector. So uh, we will end up with the vector 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, moving on to intro to sets. Sets are a collection of unique values. So we have set. Uh, keyword A, A, keyword B, keyword C, 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 keyword D, keyword D. So what it says is they have to be unique. So when we call the set function on this list, we have all these repeats in here. Those repeats are going to be tossed out. So we'll end up with A, B, C, D. And then what we have here below is closure.set slash union. So it's going to take the union of this set, A, B, C, and the union of that set, B, C, D. And so we'll get A from this set. B happens to be in both sets, so we get one of those. C is in both sets, so we get one of those. And then this one finally has a D in it, so we'll get 
A, B, C, and then D from this set. All right, so we'll have this set, A, B, C, and D. Run that, and that works. All right, moving on, sets conj. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is conj a value onto a set. Okay, so we're gonna, uh, we wanna end up with one, two, three, four, so we want to uh, type in, basically we wanna add in two. Uh, we could also add in two, three, four, one, and all those, and they'll be tossed out, but really, uh, we just need to, to add it into our set. Okay, I got that one right. So let's move on to problem number 10, and that'll be the last one for this video. Intro to maps. Okay, maps store key value pairs. Both maps and keywords can be used as lookup functions. Commas can be used to make maps more readable, but they are not required. So this is my one of my absolute favorite uh, features of Clojure is that commas are white space. You know, after dealing with, uh, especially with SQL, where you're kind of interactively working with it, and then, uh, you know, some... You need a comma between things, and then if you sort of comment out one to test it without something, then you have this extra comma, or you're missing a comma. And you kind of look at it and you realize these commas, they add really nothing, right? All you need is white space. So why why would you have this extra comma white space that really adds nothing? Uh, so that's my rant against uh, commas. So uh, if you ever are going to design some language, and you're thinking, oh, we can just use commas to delimit things. Just don't do it. Just just use white space and uh, make everybody happy. Thanks. All right, hash map. A10, B20, C30, and then we have B. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a hash map with key value pairs. So it'll be A is 10, B is 20, C is 30. And then once we have that hash map, we're going to use it as a function that we call and we'll have the keyword b passes an argument to that function uh, and so what's going to happen is going to make this whole hash map call the hash map as a function with b as an argument and use that argument to look up so let's say the key b will look up 20 so 20 is going to come here and they conversely show you that keywords can also be functions on hash maps so we see uh, what we do here is we have a a hash map literal a10 b20 c30 and then we're going to call the keyword b as a function with this hash map as its argument and 20 will come up so. okay so we got the first 10 problems right so thank you for watching